Hi everyone. Uh, so welcome to week number two. Uh, so we'll do a quick welcome. Oh, I forgot to set this up. Let's add this. Welcome. And a little higher. Uh, super excited. Uh, so week number two. Um, hopefully the first week was okay. Um, let's go on to the second week. Uh, so basically today, what we're going to be talking about in this video, at least, um, is conditional probability. Uh, so we'll be looking at conditional probability. Uh, and what is this? So basically a lot of times when we're looking at probability, um, we're asking if, uh, something has occurred, but we generally know information on what has already happened. Um, so as a quick example, um, imagine your friend has two dice, right? So they, they just rolled two dice, uh, but they kept the results from you, right? So they said, okay, um, I'm not going to let you know what they are. Um, and what are the chances that I got two ones? Uh, so in this case, you're going to be like, well, obviously it's 136, right? There's 36 different options. Each of the die can be six. Um, so it's one in 36. But then they go, okay, fine. I'm going to let you see one of the dice. And they show you the number one. So you see that one of them is a one. Um, and so now the question becomes, okay, if you know that one of them is a one, does that change your probability? Do you have now more information um, about the problem? What's, what's the new information? Like, how does this help? Uh, so basically, we're going to go through this example in detail. Um, and that's going to be our first example um, for today. Uh, and so we're going to talk about um, can, what's this idea of conditional probability, when one thing is dependent on something else. Uh, so let's dive deeper into this. So most of this part should be okay, should be basically what we've done before. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to note that, um, remember we have two die. So where is it? We, we have two die, um, and each die has six sides, right? So basically what we have is we're going to have our, um, sample space be the set of all ordered pairs. Um, and you can see there's six by six, so there's 36 different options. Uh, so this is our sample space, right? Sample space. Um, and basically our, th our, oh yeah, so I have it written down. Uh, and so now our friend is basically asking, well, what is the chance of getting two ones, right? What's, what's that probability? Um, and so we, we kind of went over this. The, the way to do probability is you take some subset of your sample space. Um, in our case, the subset we're going to take is the one where we have two ones. So there's only one subset like this. It's only this one here. Um, and so we let A to be equal to the subset one, one. Um, and this basically tells us what our probability is. So recall that the probability of our subset A is just the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in our set omega. Um, so here we have one element in the first thing, 36 elements in the bottom thing, uh, and we know the probability is one in 36. And so this is where things now get a little more difficult. Um, so at this point, your, ba your friend basically says, okay, I'm gonna show you one of the two dice. Um, and so um, a common student mistake, so I have, I have it um, written here, common student mistake, um, is to basically think, okay, he showed me, they've shown me one of the dice, um, and so since I know one of the dice, I just have to think about what the other dice is, right? So the other dice has a one in six chance, um, of being a one. So the probability should just be one, one six. Um, and the problem here becomes is that, um, although that is technically true, um, it's also technically wrong, uh, because yes, the other dice has a chance if one is six. But the thing you forget, but that doesn't mean your probability of having two ones is one in six. And the reason why is because your friend had a choice on which die to show you. Since they had a choice on which die to show you, um, they could have shown you like if there's if um, they could have shown you the left one or the right one. Right. So there's actually a lot more options. And actually, let's look at this in the sample space. So if we look at the sample space, which ones are one have a one in them? Um, so. If we look at all of these, um, all of these have ones in the first, in the second component, and all of these have ones in the first component, 
which means if it was any one of these, I guess, 11 different options, um, then your friend could have chosen a one. Uh, so in other words, what we have now is we, we have a new sample space. So our new sample space is going to be this new set. So obviously we have one, one just as before, but again, we can have one in the second column. Um, or we can have one in the first um, column. Uh, so we already have one, one there, so we won't repeat it. And one, six. And so we have our new um, sample space. Um, well, so our new sample space has 11 elements, right? So we have 11 elements. Um, and the subset we're looking for um, is just one of them, right? So the subset um, is only one of them, it's one, one. And so our probability is P of A is um, the size of A divided by the size of omega. So it's one over 11, um, which is a lot less than one sixth. So basically by your friend doing this, they, they want you to think you have a better chance of solving it when in fact they're making it harder for you um, to figure it out. Um, it's obviously still better than the one in 36, um, but this is how like our brains can manipulate us into thinking that something is possible when something is not. Um, and so it's something to think about, always think about um, all the things that are kind of happening. Um, and so basically what we have here is what's called conditional probability. Um, and so like, so the question becomes, how do we represent this mathematically? So notice that our event A never changed, right? So A was always the same. Uh, so the, the event A uh, stayed the same. So the event stayed as two, one. So A is always equal to one, one. What changed is our sample space. Um, and basically the sample space became the event. One of the dice is in fact the one. So we can actually define a new event B um, which is that one of the dice is one. So that's kind of what we do. We say B is the event one of the dice is one, right? This is kind of exactly what we did in order to calculate the sample space from above. Uh, and then once we have that, what we say is, okay, so therefore um, what we want is we want um, our new sample space. So what, what we're gonna say is we're gonna define something called the conditional probability, right? We want A to be conditional on B, so of A given B, because we wanna look at how often A happens supposing B is happening. Uh, and so the way to kind of do this is we write it as this. So we say A given B. So this line down the middle basically means is the word given. Given. Um, and so let's think about this. We, we know our sample space, right? Our sample space is the new set B, um, but our, our um, space above is actually gonna be A intersect B. Now the example I gave doesn't really demonstrate why this is. Um, the way to kind of think about it is, for example, if A happened to be, um, if the two numbers were the same. So uh, if A, for example, um, if A is the event, um, both numbers on dice, on dice are same, on dice are same. So in this case, what we have is we have um, A being the set of everything on this diagonal here. Um, actually, I should have done this in a highlighter. Uh, we'll do it in green, there we go. So a is everything on the set. And then when we restrict to the set B, we're only caring about one, one, right? If we know one of them is one, um, we just need to worry about whether the other one is a one or not. Um, and this is why we take the intersection um, of the two. And so this is where the conditional probability kind of comes in. Um, but we don't want necessarily want to always work with this. Um, we want to really work with these functions, the probability functions. So how do we see this in a probabilistic way? Um, and actually it's not too hard. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a given B, right? So this is equal to a intersect B, um, a intersect B divided by B. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the top by the size of omega, and I'm going to divide the bottom by the size of omega. And then what you'll notice is that what this gives us is the definitions for both the probability of the top thing and the bottom thing. So we have P of A intersect B on top and P of B on the bottom. So you just take the probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. And so now we have a nice way of reading this, right? So the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Um, we can also reorder this. Um, and just move the B kind of to the other side so I can move the B over here. Um, and I would get the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Now normally when we write it in this way, um, we call this the multiplication rule. Uh, so this is called the multiplication rule here. Um, and basically intuitively what this is saying is if that the B, if the event B happens one half the time, uh, so basically if probability of B is equal to one half, um, and if one fourth of the time um, that B happens, the event A happens. So if the probability of A given B, so the probability of A happening whenever B happens is given by one fourth, then the probability that A happens is just going to be the multiplication of the two. Or that both of them happen, it's the probability that both. So we get the probability of A and B is equal to one half times one fourth, so it's one eighth. Um, and this is basically where this is coming from. Uh, so conditional probability is a little confusing. Uh, this is probably best done with through a few different examples. Uh, so if there's, we'll do a few more examples coming up. Um, and we'll use what's called a tree diagram to kind of help us. Um, but for now, we'll stop here uh, for this little portion.